Hello everyone, welcome back to John Builds. Thank you for joining me today in what will be my first ever tank build. I've been building models for over 30 years and I finally thought it was time to uh, build a tank. So for my first tank build, I decided to go with the kit, the Mark A Whip here. And this was in 135 scale. It's produced by Mang. So you can see through this build, whenever you see me gluing two parts together, I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin. So I decided to go with the kit for the Mark A Whip It, just because it suits the, uh, the kind of genre that I'm interested in. I'm interested in a lot of the uh, older warships, older tanks, older aircrafts. So it fitted my, my interest perfectly. This was quite a straightforward build. A lot of the parts went together really nice. This is the first kit I'd ever seen where you had to fold them into the correct angle, just using the uh, pre-scored parts. So this was quite a refreshing change to work at a kit at a 135 scale. People who've been watching my channel for some years know that I tend to work in 1200 scale. 1350 scale. And my eyes are not quite what they used to be so it was nice to have a little break just from working with all the really fine parts. This was the only real tricky part of this build I'd say but what I found is just by gluing it in three or four different sections at a time it went together quite nice. As you can see I glued the front section on first and then I left that to dry for 5-10 minutes and then I came back and just applied some more glue to the second parts. I found out that it just went together as a nice little section after that. To make these videos just flow nice and make it easy, easy to watch, some of the sections are cut out but I still left in around about 80% of this build. So it wasn't a particularly challenging build but it was still very enjoyable. So as you can see I've started to use a, a long handle paintbrush. I use this to apply the glue, but I only use it for a particular reason is obviously with the little brushes that come with the Tamiya Extra Thin. When the bottle gets really low it's quite hard to pick the glue up. That's why I tend to swap it over and then just use a standard paintbrush.
we're getting very close to actually this uh, fully assembly being complete and let's say I chose for my first tanker a kit that only had around about 80 parts I didn't want to make it too complicated for myself okay so moving on to the painting section of this build as you can see I'm just using some TS1 from Tamir I just find it a lot more effective nowadays just to use a, a rattle can just to get the first coat of paint on All the way through this build I'll be using my part shot 186 airbrush normally between a, a 0.3 nozzle and set a PSI of 15 to 20 PSI. So now I'm applying the top coat and I went with a Tamiya olive dab and as you can see I'm not looking for a full coverage coat I'm wanting the base coat to actually shine through as well so it, the coverage is only around about 60% Okay, because I like to class myself as a traditional modeler, an old school modeler, so whenever possible I still like to try and hand paint as much as I can. I like to think it is how it was done in the olden days. And same again, just a good old fashioned dry brushing. And all it's doing is just going to tone back some of the olive dab and just make it a lot more visually interesting to the eye it's all about trying to trick the eye into thinking it's something there that's not so I'm using a vehicle weathering effect set and I absolutely uh, love using oils for models I, I just think you can just blend them in that's a hundred times better than acrylics if you don't like how the effect looks you can just push it straight off again and try again as acrylics normally you'll then have to uh, reapply the, the base coat and then the top coat but now with the oils you can really blend them in as much as you want and then take off as much as you want because you have around about 48 to 72 hours of drying time before they completely dry you can see I'm just blending the oils now so if it looks a little bit too strong in some parts and I'm taking back some of the khaki and same again just back to a little bit of quite relaxing hand painting. So of this paint scheme I just really looked at the uh, the box art and just tried to uh, replicate that the best I could. There's not many pictures around anymore of these uh, easy in service. So it's just, just trying to make it look as nice as possible to the eye. I'm just adding the, uh, the decals now and a lot of the time I supply them just with the basic old tap water but I actually found that I really like that decal fix just to really soften up the, uh, the film to make it not visible anymore. And then I'm just a little bit of highlight painting, just picking out some of the natural steel parts. Okay, so moving on to the, uh, the exhaust or the muffler. I'm actually just giving it a first coat. I just uh, missed the surface of finisher. The good thing about this, it dries really quick. 
but when it is drying you can get the tip of the brush like I'm doing now and you can kind of bash it and it will rough it up and so it will look like it's got some see, like rust particles hanging on it so I'm using the uh, Tamiya Hull Red and I really like this colour for you know, looking to uh, let's see, add rust or something I think it gives it a really nice base coat so, so now I'm just using some model wash it's going to actually use this as a bit of a glue so it also will darken up the hull red but it will actually glue that when I apply the uh, Vallejo pigment rust it will actually stick to that model wash I'm just going to seal the pigment in, just using a little bit more model wash, just right on the tip of the exhaust and just around where the, uh, the weld seams would be and the brackets. It's all about just, just enough, not too much. You always know if you've done too much. So a lot of people always ask me why I use white glue on for different parts of my models and it's only really for just little sections where it's going to sit there it's quite not a constructional part it's not offering any weight so that's why I uh, use the uh, white glue because it, then it won't foul the paint so now moving on to the construction of the track and even though this is my first tank build it's something I hear a lot in forums where people talk about how building tracks can be a nightmare this one snapped together quite nice and it was quite articulated so I just built this up in sections of around about 20 track pieces and I sprayed these with a hull red again then I attached it to the uh, the tank and just in the uh, 20 mil sections like I say I'm just using the uh, white glue again it's not instant grab so it's not like super glue but it, you put it in place and it will start to grab it straight away but then it will be fully dry after around about 6 to 8 hours but you still have that manipulation time and I just think it does a perfect job for certain situations So same again, it's a perfect option to show you where I use the, uh, the white glue. It's just for parts, it's just going to sit there. Obviously, sometimes you can use plastic glue and it will foul the paint. So ideally, for the little parts are just going to sit and hang. Just use a little bit of white glue. Okay, so I'm pretty much using every colour in the... Uh, the vehicle weathering set and all I'm going to do is same again I'm just going to mix it up with a little bit of Bob Ross odorless thinner and I'm going to use this as a like a glue that will stick the uh, European earth pigment to it and like I say I've got to be honest with you this is my first tank so a lot of this procedure trying to add some mud I just made it up as I went along and tried didn't like it you can wipe it off try again and that's what it's about you know when it looks right you know when your eye looks it looks right and you know when your eye sees it not looking right at all and that's the model building to me it starts to look right to my eye you just go with it it starts to look wrong and then you can just take it off and start again So I'm just putting this European earth onto the uh, the cutting mat. So I'm going to just use a little trowel. I'm going to scoop it up, put it on. It's obviously going to get start to get glued by that little mixture I made from the uh, oils, and I'm just knocking the excess off. And just wherever I add the oil mix, I'm now adding the European earth pigment.
source had given it a complete coverage it was now time to kind of mix up some more of like a ceiling mix I'm using two colors this time I'm using light mud and the earth so I'm just mixing these together so I'm going a little bit of a Bob Ross odorless thinner and now I'm just going to just use the brush and just it's really it's a really wet mix so all I'm going to do is just dab it on and let it run into uh, all the tracks and just alternating between the different colors between the light mud and the earth So I pretty much just had to repeat the stages around again. I did it for around about three or four times until I'd built up quite a nice thick layer of mud. Just doing it once didn't look quite right. Like I say, after now I've done it about three or four times and it just looks thicker. So after the oils and pigment mixture had been drying over 12 hours I just came back the next day and just made myself another wet mix using the 502 dark mud and just went over the entire mudded section oh, again and then once that had dried, if it dried really light again I just went over it again until I got the desired effect that I wanted Even though it doesn't look perfect, I think it looks okay for my uh, first attempt There's ways I'd improve it, there's things I'd do different but well, that's model building. So if you made it this far into the build, I just want to say thank you for joining me in what's been my first ever tank build in over 30 years of modeling so if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see me build some more armor please just leave a comment on what you'd like to see next thank you all for watching and i'll see you all again soon